Pull out your Bibles, please, and turn with me first to Psalm 51. We're going to read this today, and then in a couple of weeks we'll probably read the whole psalm, um, as this is one of the lectionary texts that's always used on uh, Ash Wednesday. And what a very powerful um, psalm. Psalm 51, we're going to read just two verses, 16 and 17, and then we're going to flip over to Hebrews chapter 13, and just two verses there as well. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 15 and 16. Listen now for the word of the Lord. You do not like delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. And then from Hebrews chapter 13, 15 and 16. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for such sacrifice God is pleased. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and awesome are you, Almighty God. And how worthy indeed you are of praise. God, we don't like to talk about sacrifice because we don't like to have to think about something costing us something. But today, we want to bring a sacrifice of praise into your house. So bless us, God, and use us in this time together. We praise you. Amen. How good are you at making sacrifices? What if you're um, the batter, and the bases are loaded, and you know that you need one more run? Would you make a sacrificial hit and not be praised for your hitting so that your teammate can make the run? Would you make that kind of sacrifice? Um, what if your neighbor needed your last slice of bread and you really were thinking peanut butter and jelly was coming out to you? It's just not really that good without the bread. You know what I'm saying? Would you be willing to make that kind of sacrifice? What if you were called literally to lay down your life for another? You hear stories about people who jump on a grenade so that their fellow service men or women might be saved. Or you hear stories about someone who was in a firefight and jumped in front of the bullet instead of someone else. Or someone who takes an opportunity when they see a house on fire and they know that somebody's in there, they run in, sacrificing and offering themselves to maybe um, bring another life and make it safe. What kind of sacrifices are we willing to offer? Today, um, we're going to start um, reading um, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 16 and 17. 15 and 16. 15 and 16. I was, we're reading 16 and 17 of the psalm and 15 and 16 of Hebrews. So, actually, I said we're going to start looking at Hebrews 15 and 16 of chapter 13 because we're going to spend three weeks on those two verses. Yeah, and we're going to do it. And guess what? <laughs> you can help me. You can help me. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to be so good at knowing what these two verses say. In three weeks, we're going to know it because we will have memorized it by then. So today we're going to start memorizing. Um, I gave you a sheet that has the words to a song and the words to the Hebrews text. Hebrews chapter 16... Verses 15, thir sorry, 13. No, Maurice tells you all the time I don't do numbers. He, there it is, Hebrews chapter 13, 15, and 16. But today we're just going to memorize verse 15. And here's how I do it with the kids. Johnny, you, you might know how we do it with the kids, don't you? You know why I have dry erase board up here, don't you? Yeah. Um, you want to come help with that? No? Okay, I'll do it all by myself. But you help learning it, okay? So, first of all, we're going to read it together. Pardon my back. You just have to use your paper. Okay. So, ready? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess His name. Let's do it again. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. Have you got 
got it yet? And say it. Through Jesus. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna um, we're gonna read it one more time. I'm gonna take away a couple of words, and we'll see. Oh, and, and you can cheat a little bit because this marker made it kind of dark. So we're gonna take away a few words and see how we do. Ready? Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of lips that openly profess his name. How did you do? Are you looking at your sheet on your lap? <laughs> Alright, here we go again. We're going to take some more away. Sorry guys, in the choir. Alright, you ready? Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of lips that openly profess his name. Alright, we're going to take some more away. Alright. You can cheat a little bit. Ready? Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer a sacrifice. Oh, sorry, I messed it up. Through, do it again. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. You get the rhythm here? Are you getting it? Johnny, how much should we take away? Huh? You think? You think they have it? No. Okay, let's just do a few more. You can see where the blanks are, so let's do it. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess His name. You have it now. You ready? Are you ready? Hi, Joni. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. You got it. You got it. Where's it come from? You got it. All right. Now, the reason that I wanted to have it sitting right here is because I wanted to make a statement on the word sacrifice. And when we talk about sacrifice, a lot of times we go, okay, what are they going to ask me to do? Right? If I talk about sacrifice, you're going to think I'm going to ask you to do something, aren't you? What, what sacrifice am I going to be asked to make today? Today, I want you to recognize that the sacrifice has already been made. That's why the first two words, through Jesus, that's all we're going to look at today. Through Jesus. Now, you remember from the Old Testament that God made a provision for people um, who were in covenant relationship with God himself. That God provided a, 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 a ritual of sacrifice that the people could bring burnt offerings before God's throne um, when they sinned. Because I think God knows that we need some kind of sign and some kind of understanding when we have sinned against God by what we did or what we didn't do when we were prompted to do something by God and we didn't do it. Those are sins and those cut us off from the right relationship with God. And I think God knows humanity better than we even think we know ourselves. God knows humanity in such a way that God knew that we would need to be reminded that we are sinners, and that when there's something that's cutting off that relationship with God, we have to, have to, have to do something about it. And so, people would bring their sacrifices and lay them on the altar. Depends on how bad your sin was. Maybe you'd have a pigeon or a dove, or maybe you'd need a really big bull, depending on how bad your, your sin was, to offer on the altar to ask God for forgiveness. Throughout the years and throughout Old Testament history, God is constantly desiring to have a relationship with God. I'm going to use an illustration with you that I've used before. It's this lovely cross that I usually have hanging in my office that I got at a Cokesbury tent sale for $10 because the glue 
it didn't stick together. And it's wonderful because if you don't play with it on the wall, it looks beautiful. But I just want to talk about this part first. Remember what this part represents? Does anybody remember? I've done this before. This part represents God's desire to be in relationship with us. So if you think of, when you think about God or when you pray sometimes, or when you go, help me Jesus, do you do help me Jesus like this? Or do you do help me Jesus? You usually look up, don't you? You think about God is up. God is up there, and we're down here. And so this represents, this piece of the cross represents that relationship, God and us, and how much God desires to have that relationship with us. If I had this part that was broken in two, I could show you the representation of what happened over and over and over again in Old Testament scriptures. That covenant was broken over and over and over again, and it didn't matter how many sacrifices people made on the altar, they kept on sinning. And God realized, this isn't working. i got to do something different. And that's why when we think about the cross, it really truly represents Jesus Christ. Because when that relationship with God was broken between you and I, Jesus came. That's this part. Jesus came to be among us, providing a bridge, if you will, this part of the cross representing us down here and God up here. What's in between? Jesus Christ. Jesus became the one who came to show us the way to be in right relationship with God. Hebrews, if you read the whole book, it's only a few chapters long, 13 chapters. We're in the last chapter, 13, 14 chapters. It's a short book. Read the whole thing. It's all about Paul reminding them that the sacrifices of man don't work any longer because, and we don't even have to think about those anymore, because once for all, Jesus died on a cross. No more sacrifices have to be made. The sacrifice, which we celebrate today with these elements, sacrifice of Jesus' body and Jesus' blood. Those sacrifices have already been made by Jesus Christ. Therefore, Jesus, through Jesus, blah, 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 sacrifice of praise. Through Jesus. The sacrifice that we make is nothing apart from Jesus. Because guess what? <clears throat> apart from Jesus, you and I can do nothing. But Jesus knew that. That's why we have this part of the cross. And in some portrayals of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, you see Jesus carrying the entire cross. In other portrayals, you'll see the cross beam. And Jesus is tied, or maybe he's nailed already to that, as he's on his way to Golgotha. And, and different traditions portray that differently. Some say that he was nailed to the cross and then the whole cross was dropped into the ground. Other traditions with the cross beam, he would have carried the cross beam and then would have been hoisted up on the pole and then his feet nailed to the cross. Regardless, this part of the cross reminds us that Jesus made the sacrifice for you and I when he stretched out his arms and he died on the cross so that this relationship, which is broken, could be made whole again through Jesus Christ. So today, when we think about the sacrifice of praise, we think about you and I being able to bring that sometimes, don't we? But really, Jesus has already made the sacrifice. So you and I, there's nothing we can bring that can outgive what Jesus did, what God did through Jesus, making a way for us to have a perfect relationship with him again. The sacrifice of praise cannot be accomplished apart from Jesus. So today I want to teach you a song, and Cassie, this is such a confirmation because in your medley at the beginning of the service, you played this song. And ever since I chose this scripture, this song's been bouncing around in my head, and I'm like, well, we have enough songs we're singing that day, but we're going to sing it anyway. You have the words to it. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And this is just a praise chorus. And it's so easy to learn. I want you to learn it with me. It goes like this. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house.
some of you have heard this before. I hear you chiming right in. So let's sing it again together. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. It goes on. And we talk about so many times I've heard people walk out of a worship service, not here, other places, of course, and say, I didn't get anything out of worship at all. No, I'm kidding. Here, it happens. I bet you've said it in the car on the way home. I didn't get anything out of worship today. Well, guess what? Worship isn't about you. Worship is about God. So I always want to ask, when somebody says, I didn't get anything out of worship today, I want to ask, what did you bring? Bring the sacrifice of praise. Will you stand and let us try to sing this song together? We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house. and said, eat from this, all of you. This is my body which is given for you. When you break it, when you eat it, do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it. He gave thanks to you, Almighty God, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant. The sacrifice that I have made says Jesus, is a new covenant between you and God. Jesus said, when you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these almighty acts in Christ Jesus, we give thanks and praise and we offer ourselves, remembering that Christ is holy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we come today, God, acknowledging that apart from Jesus Christ, we indeed are nothing. Forgive us again today because we have separated ourselves again from you and we know that we are nothing apart from you. By this sacrifice, then, God, make us one with you and one with each other in Christ Jesus until he comes again in glory and receives us into himself. So pour out your Holy Spirit, Almighty God, upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they might truly be for us the body and the blood of Jesus Christ broken and poured out. 
Thank you, gracious God. Today we remember and we celebrate the lives of those, those who have gone before us, those who walk alongside us, those who are having difficulties in life and going through treatments and illnesses and grief and loss and trying to find meaning in life. Hear our prayers for these as we offer them to your throne. Oh. Lynn, Tabitha, and so and Papa, Dorsey and Judy, Clyde Murray, Jack, Eva Lynn Cordo, and Amber Pennington, Thank you, God, for hearing the prayers of your people. Now bless us as we endeavor to inhabit your praises, as we endeavor to live our lives never apart from Jesus Christ, as we take within us today that which is you, Jesus Christ, broken and poured out, that we might be strengthened by your Spirit in us. Christ, in me, the hope of glory, let that hope flood our world in and around and through us this day. Now we ask all these things and we pray them in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Thank you. 